I know Packers fans, we've been through this a thousand times at this point, and it's a broken record to come on here and preach about past playoff failures, but you still can't deny it. Frank Nitty here, and I'm going to talk about the final game of the 2023 season in the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay was eliminated Saturday night from the playoffs by the San Francisco 49ers for the third time in the last four playoff appearances, five times overall over the last decade. And I know if it, it sucks. It, it fucking sucks. I just can't stand the fact that this team completely owns us in the postseason. It started with Colin Kaepernick and it hasn't ended still. You know, whether we get them at home or we go on the road, we just can't beat them. That that's it. We 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 can't beat the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan just owns Matt LaFleur. It just is what it is, man. No matter no matter how tough we play them, regardless of if we control the game for a certain amount of time, we always end up blowing it in the end. And that's just pretty much what you saw. And this one sucks so much because we had them. We had them. The Packers moved the ball into the red zone and only came away with six points to start the game. You know, you gotta get their defense credit. But for us to only get six points from those three red zone trips blows because we were playing the number one seeded team. A team that most of the season was blowing opposing teams out of the building, putting a beat down on so many teams throughout the season, but at times showed that they're not invincible. The 49ers are not invincible. They're beatable, man. We could have we could have beat them. We should have beat them. But we blew it. So, you know, and, and we and we blew it and because we had and, and a lot of that just had to do with a lot of missed opportunities. Again, as, as I said, settling for six points on three red zone trips, one drive stalls on fourth down. So then, you know, and, and, and that, that, that drive that stalled on fourth down when they stopped us, then when Jewel and Love actually got that first down. I, don't, I just don't know what the reps, what the reps saw. But that was a first down. That was a horrible spot by the reps. On top of missing the 49ers lineup offsides. You know, the refs definitely showed their cards in this game, man. But I'm not going to sit here and start blaming them. We had our chances to beat the 49ers, even with the even with all those circumstances. But but the point is, though, Jordan Love got that first down. And I wish Matt would have challenged the spot. But I get early in the game, you probably don't want to waste the challenge. But still, that was just a horrible call. Just horrible call. Horrible spot by the refs. Joe Love, no, 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 definitely got that first down. But you know, and the thing is, when we when we went for it on fourth down, I really had no problem with us going for it. I just hated the results. I hate the results of the spot, and I hate the results of the football game. You know, but just yeah, fuck the 49ers, man, fuck them. I wanted to beat those guys so bad. Tired of losing, tired, just absolutely tired of losing to them. We had, we had so many chances to win and punched them in the mouth. Brock Purdy was literally trying to throw the game away in the first half. Darnell Savage dropped a gimme interception. Another pick went right through Keyshawn Nixon's hands later in the game. This is the difference between our defense and their free defense is that they made plays when it came to them. And no, I'm not blaming the defense. All I'm saying is make the plays. Catch the ball. These opportunities don't come often. Darnell Savage catches the ball. He's most likely gone for another pick six. Then and and I just remember when I watched that in real time when he dropped that interception, I said that's probably gonna come back to bite him in the ass, and it sure did. Sure enough, the next forty nine ers drive, he gets he gets beat by George Kittle for a touchdown. So you gotta capitalize on the opportunities, man. So in situations like that where where the many missed opportunities, Green Bay just didn't play their best ball by any means, and if they did, this game would have been a W. I just I have no doubt in my mind. This thing definitely would have been a W. With all the mistakes they made, they still only lost by three points. So you, you got, at the very least, you got to keep your head up and just think about that. Jordan Love did not have a good game, but I think he's done enough to show he's our starting quarterback for the foreseeable future. You hope he doesn't. You you hope he doesn't regress next season and instead just continues to improve <clears throat> as as a quarterback and especially on his decision making. I and mean, he picked the wrong time to turn the Brett Favre at the end of that game by. Throwing across his body into coverage, ending on an interception. You know, I don't, I, I, uh, I just don't, I just don't know what Jordan's Jordan saw, but you just need to just throw the ball away. He has to learn to just throw the ball away. In a situation where we need to get into at least field goal range to tie the game, you can't, you can't sit there and wet the bed like that. So I just think, I just think definitely Jordan had to panic in that situation. He just tried to force it, and it just wasn't there. So. 
And that was probably the, you know, obviously that was the worst throw he, he's made all season because obviously that's what ended our season. So he picked the wrong time. Like I said, he picked it. He just picked the wrong time to turn the Brett Favre. That was a total Brett Favre throw if I ever saw one. <laughs> that was a complete a Brett Favre throw, man. So, yeah. And, and then, of course, he had another interception that was that was also a, a bad throw. You know, that was that was thrown behind Tucker Craft that was tipped off his hands into the defender. So, yeah, you know, just watching that whole sequence, it just really reminded me of just how we were playing football in October. Way back in October, when we were playing just bad football. And and again, that's just the one thing I want you and love to definitely improve on and then coming into next year is, is, is two minute is the two minute drill. And I really need him to improve on the two minute drill and not throw the game away by throwing interceptions because that's how we lost a lot of games this season. The Broncos, Raiders, you know. Anyway, uh, overall, though, I, st I don't want to shit on Joe and Love too much because he's been playing some really good football over the last past month. But he's got it, you know, but again, like I say, he's got to know when to throw the ball away. He's got to understand the situation, throw it away and just live it, just live to see another down. It's first down. All we got to do is just get in the field goal range. We don't need to force anything. Yes, getting all the way down to score a touchdown would have been a lot better to win the game, but at least get to where Anderson Carson can redeem himself. Because otherwise, the Packers will be out of their minds by bringing this guy back. Anderson Carson missed the most field goals to point out their attempts combined by, by a bunch than any other kicker this season. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I had my problems with him all season long. Yet despite the many times he's missed, Cost us, cost us a point or three. The Packers still went into the postseason with this guy as our main kicker. I mean, you could have just went and got Mason Crosby back on the cheap. He makes that, you know, you get Mason Crosby back, he makes that kick easily and ties it up. But nope. So oh, and as far as I'm concerned, you just reap what you sow. You chose to come into the playoffs with a poor, a poor special teams as usual. And of course, they play their hand in helping us lose the football game. And yes, I know Carson got us our points after failing to the, the score touchdowns and red zone early. I get it. He was you know, I get it. But you need your kickers to show up and hit them when your season's on the line. So just overall, just just F uh, Anderson Carson. If they stick with him, forget it. You made your bed. Now you just go ahead and lay in it. But but again, like I, as I said, those are just the many missed opportunities and missed blown, you know. Is, but, you know, you just don't want to just blame one person because overall this was just a total team loss. That was a total team loss. It's the offense fault for not scoring touchdowns in the red zone. It's the defense fault for not catching those easy interceptions. It's Anderson Carson's fault. It's Jordan Love's fault for those two picks. Losing a turnover battle. It's just every, It was everyone's fault. It was just a total team collapse like we've seen them do many times over and over and over again. When we had these teams backed into a corner and all we got to do is just do enough to punch them in the mouth to win football games, and we always find a way to blow it. When, when Aaron Jones bust out that 50-yard run, I thought for sure that drive was going to end in some points. <laughs> I think we all did. And, you know, I thought, you know, I think we all did. I, I had hopes that we were really going to beat them when he busted out that run. But just, once again, we just blew it. You know, you just go back and just, those losses in the playoffs with Aaron Rodgers, they were brutal. Because you know we we should have won more than more than one Super Bowl with Rodgers. We should have no excuses. Getting this far, even after moving on from Aaron Rodgers, it's is is honestly incredible. Even after to see how far this team gotten, despite moving on from Aaron Rodgers, it's just incredible. Nobody, not even myself, thought that Green Bay would get this far. Let alone fall just three points short of pulling up one of one of the biggest upsets in recent memory by beating the 49ers on the road as a seventh seed. This team fought, scratched, and clawed its way into the postseason, spanked the Cowboys, and then ran into the 49ers again. But whatever. Point being, I'm happy that they overcame a lot of demons that screwed them to start the season. October, uh, you know, watching them play in October was just brutal to watch. Not Harry Aaron Jones, majority of the season, played his part as well. Christian Watson, obviously, in and out of the lineup. Jair Zander, in and out of the lineup. Other things, other things, but glad we didn't give up like it just appeared to be. When we went, when, when when the guys, the GMs traded Russell Douglas, that was definitely them giving up, giving up on the season. They weren't expecting us to get this far. They weren't. They were just pretty much just getting ready for the next season. They were just, they were just giving, they were just getting ready to go to, to to get ready for the next season. They weren't expecting this this team to make the playoffs. 
but they did and they proved to be a dangerous team in the playoffs and could have almost pulled one of the biggest upsets in recent memory for sure. It would have just been so amazing to just finally beat the 49ers just and and just <laughs> man it would just been it would just felt so damn good man cuz you're just so sick and tired of losing to these dudes. But you just can't you can't just be too surprised by the results even though they have their chances. So oh, man, I just think I just think overall now just going into the postseason I think the Packers need to invest in drafting for the off the Justin guys on the offensive line, you know, because if, if David Bakhtiari just can't play, then just trade him for something, you know, just just trade him, because and, and, at this point the guy's just stealing money, all right, he's just stealing money because he can't get out there and play, so just if if he if he can't just go then just trade him for something, keep Aaron Jones for the love of God, just please keep Aaron Jones on this football team. He means too much to the success of this offense that it would just be an absolute brutal loss. So please keep Aaron Jones. Get another speedy back that can compliment him. You can move on from A.J. Dillon. I've seen enough out of him. I don't really care if he comes back. Explore other kickers out there, please. All right, you, 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 draft, you draft this kid out of the sixth round, him coming into the damn NFL, missing a whole lot of kicks even when he was in college. So please invest and, and try to find some and, and, and work out some other kickers in the post in the offseason. You know, you can go, you know, try to find and draft an inside linebacker and move on from DeRondre Campbell. I'm, you know, I'm I'm pretty much done with him as well. You know, you can definitely invest in the safety position. I think overall Darnell Savage definitely had a definitely kind of bounced back this year after after the last two seasons. He he just played absolutely sh like shit. Still don't really like him that much in coverage, but his play did improve overall. So if you want to keep him around, that's fine. But definitely feel the need for another safety line up next to him. And, and, and to me, if they can reconstruct Rashawn Gary's contract also, because he's not worth the money either. I'm sorry to say, after playing some good football for the first month or two, Rashawn Gary's overall production took a slip big time. And I just think when we needed him in this game, he didn't show up. It's due especially towards the end of the game. I just don't, I didn't, I mean, in the beginning of the game, they were getting good pressure on Brock Purdy, but I just think towards the end of the game, eventually the D-line just couldn't get, it just couldn't get home, and Purdy had plenty of time to make his reads and pull off that, la that last drive. So, you know, a guy like Gary just didn't show up when we really needed him to. <clears throat> so, Gary, I like, I like, I, re I like Rashawn Gary, but not worth it with paying him. Jair Alexander, pretty much the same thing. You know, just him just being constantly being injured, just being injury prone, just undeserving of being the, the highest paid corner and because he, he just can't stay healthy. I want Jair out there. I don't want to see him go anywhere else. But I just think if we want to find, we want to get more guys in this football team to help this football team, I think you can do good by reconstructing these guys' contracts. So... I know Jair, but, you know, spent most of his season also, like I said, battling injuries, and he played some of his worst balls since we drafted him. I don't want to see him walk, but, again, he's just not the money. He's not worth the money spent. And, yes, I'm going to say it. <laughs> and, yes, I still think and still want them to move on from Joe Barry. We see, we, 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 look, we've all seen enough. All right, his contract is, is up at the end of this year. Let him walk. Okay. And while the defense did play better after that Panthers game, still the results under Joe Barry as a whole are still at the bottom. So please just move on from him already, Matt LaFleur. Please just, just move on. This team will not win a Super Bowl with this guy still as our defensive coordinator. You can forget it. I do not want to see this guy back in Green Bay anymore. As far as the offense goes, other than other than just finding another running back to compliment Jones, if you keep him, all in the offensive line, we're pretty good. Yeah, you know I mean, loves our Jordan loves our quarterback. We got talented wide receivers and tight ends. This offense, if it's playing this, its best football, can beat anybody. But I really believe that. I mean, once upon a time ago, we had the worst offense in the NFL, but those guys just absolutely found their spark and just completely turned it around. From a play calling standpoint, execution standpoint, these guys stepped up. These young guys stepped up, all of them. 
Tucker, you know, all, all of them. Luke Moss, great. Tucker Craft, Jordan Love, Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson when he was out there. All these guys stepped up and made this offense scary, in my opinion. And when they're and when they're all and when they're out there playing their best ball, they can beat any team. They went into Dallas and and absolutely destroyed the Cowboys, and then could have beat the San Francisco Forty Nine ers and should have beaten them. But lesson 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 the turnovers by Jordan Love and this could be a scary offense to defend in the in the coming next season. I truly, I truly believe that. You know, and had they scored even just one touchdown from those early red zone trips, they'd be preparing for the Lions at NC Championship right now. They would be winners. I mean, you go into San Francisco and hold the 49ers at just 24 points, it's good enough to beat them. But it just wasn't meant to be, man. <laughs> it, just, it, just, it just wasn't meant to be. So, yeah. And as always, you know, it just leaves you asking, well, just how many more chances can you get? You know, the NFC the is the tougher conference to come out of without question. I mean, you look at you look at you look at you look over there at the AFC, and it's just you know, right now the Chiefs are just pretty much dominating, own, owning the AFC as as we speak. But the NFC side is just it's a lot more tougher conference to come out of. So just how many more chances can you get? I mean. To get to be even get this far in the, in the conference round without Aaron Rodgers, just one year, with one season removed from moving on from Aaron Rodgers, that's a hell of an accomplishment. So as much as it sucks, it hurts to see them lose yet again in the postseason to the Niners. There's still a lot. There's still at least a lot to be happy about as far as how far we've gotten after just being one season removed from Rodgers. Because I didn't, I didn't see it. Nobody saw that coming. The pack, you know, again, the Packers just spend the offseason improving and 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 working on those things that I already mentioned. This could be a scary football team, despite how young they are. Yeah, yeah the talent is all over the place. So, but even with all that, but even with all that talent, will they ever be able to overcome the playoff failures or just keep, you know, or is the results just going to keep being the same? Who knows, man? Who knows? <laughs> But I know one thing, regardless, I'll be here talking about it as always. And that's it. You know, that's it for the 2023 season. Tough laws. Hopefully they'll bounce back next season, be even better than ever. With needed changes, but we'll see. Until then, this is Frank Nitty. I'm out of here. Peace.